welcome back to Pronunciation with Emma. In today's video, I'm going to give you a complete masterclass on sentence stress and intonation in English. Make sure you stay until the end of the video because I have a really nice surprise for you that will help you practice sentence stress and intonation more and get feedback on it. So let's start firstly with what kind of stress English uses. English is a stress time language and this basically means that you give certain words which we'll talk about in a moment, more stress and more emphasis when other words are weakened, they sound a lot softer. This is why when you're watching something with subtitles, for example, you understand everything and then you turn off the subtitles and you think, what, what was that word? That sounded like a really long word. But actually when you put the subtitles back on and you take a look, it actually turns out to be these little words all squished together and said very quickly. And that's because of sentence stress. We can compare a stress time language to, for example, a syllable time language. A syllable time language basically gives each syllable approximately the same amount of time. We can also compare it to more time languages, for example, Japanese. So if you're a Japanese speaker, congrats, you speak a more time language. This is very similar in a sense to syllable time languages where you give each more the same amount of time. I still remember when I was at university, a lecturer of mine described more time and syllable time languages like machine guns. It's like da 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 da. <laughs> While English is more like ba 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 ba. And that's because we give certain words more stress in a language like English. So let me give you an example of what I mean. Let's take this exercise here. Very simple one, okay? I hope you can count to four because that's all you need to do right now. <laughs> so we've got one, two, three, four. Okay, that's the rhythm we're going to follow. One, two, three, four. Let's try adding some words in between. For example, one and two and three and four. Now notice what I did. I didn't say one and two and three and four. I didn't stress and. I only stressed the numbers. And and was weakened to un. So not and, but un. We're using a weak form here. One and two and three and four. Let's add another word in there. One and a two and a three and a four. One and a two and a three and a four. Again, I'm not saying one and a two and a three and a four, okay? That's quite tiring and my poor hand is <laughs> gonna start hurting in a moment. But you see what I mean? So in English, we don't stress every single word. We're going to stress the numbers because they're important here in this exercise, but the and and a are going to be weakened to un, a. Uh. We're going to join them together, un, uh, un, uh. one, and a two, and a three, and a four. Now let's apply this same rule to a proper sentence. So here I've got, I want a cup of tea. I want a cup of tea. So notice I'm not saying, I want a cup of tea. It's not all stressed. I want a cup of tea. Now, when it comes to intonation, we're going to raise our pitch slightly on those stressed words. So we're not going to read it all monotone, like I want a cup of tea, okay? Sounds very robotic in English if you do that. You'll be understood, but to an, another person's ear, it will sound quite robotic. So raise your pitch on those stressed words. I want a cup of tea. I want a cup of tea. Now you're probably thinking, great Emma, understood that, but which words are stressed and which ones are unstressed? I have a handy table for you. What we can do is categorize English words into two different groups, our content words and function words. To name a few content words, nouns, adverbs, adjectives, verbs, question words, a negative auxiliary, modal, and negative words in general. For our function words, we have articles, auxiliary verbs, modal verbs, the verb to be, pronouns, prepositions, and conjunctions, otherwise known as connectives. So if we go back to our original sentence, I want a cup of tea, we have I, it's a pronoun, want, verb, a, article, cup, noun, of, preposition, t, noun. 
<laughs> so you can see here how it follows that list that I gave before. Now let's change our sentence a little bit. I would like a cup of tea. This time we've got the pronoun, well it's the same as before, pronoun. Then we've got would, we've got a modal verb. But notice I'm not saying I would like, I weaken it. I would like, so would becomes would. I would like, like is a verb, I would like a, it's the same after that actually, it's the first sentence, so <laughs> we have the article a cup, noun of uh, preposition, <laughs> and t the noun. Let's take a look at this one together. Which of these words do you think will be stressed? Okay, you can pause, have a think. She will be late to the party. She will be late to the party. So again, she, pronoun, will is our modal verb and we don't usually stress modal verbs. She will be late. Late is an adjective. To the, not to the, to the. Preposition, article, party, noun. She will be late to the party. She will be late to the party. Here's another sentence, a little bit longer to practice with. Which ones do you think will be stressed here? Feel free to pause the video and take your time. Can you go to the shop and buy me some bread? Can you go to the shop and buy me some bread? Can, remember, is a modal verb. We're not going to stress it. Can becomes can. Can you go? Can you go? Not to the, to the, to the shop. Can you go to the shop and buy me some bread? Some, strong form is some, gets weakened to a schwa. Can you go to the shop and buy me some bread? Can you go to the shop and buy me some bread? Now we sometimes break this rule if the word is used for emphasis, contrast, if it's alone in a sentence, or sometimes if it comes at the end of a sentence. So let's take this sentence here. Now in normal sentence stress, we could say, I asked her if she wanted fish and chips. I asked her, or asked, it's up to you, or asked, or asked. <laughs> I asked her if she wanted fish and chips. Fish and chips. So not fish and chips, fish and chips. Un, okay, and gets weakened to un. But let's imagine the listener that we're speaking to got a bit confused. They thought we said something else, so we need to clarify something. No, I said fish and chips, not fish or chips. Fish and chips, not fish or chips. Now I'm giving stress to and and or. Otherwise, naturally, it would be said as fish and chips and fish and chips. Fish and chips, that sounds really weird. <laughs> but it's what we would say. Now for some extra practice and to talk about the special surprise that I mentioned at the start of the video, we today are going to be using the Elsa app. Elsa is a pronunciation app that focuses on pinpointing your mistakes with pronunciation and it gives you very, very specific corrections. We're gonna go through it together. We're actually gonna go through the unit on sentence stress today. Well, we're gonna go through the unit on intonation, I should say, which also covers sentence stress. So we're gonna jump down to the unit on intonation. Oh, there it is. Okay, I'm gonna skip that. We don't need that because I've already explained it to you. You know the rules. If you're paying attention to this video, hopefully you were. We're gonna go into the first exercise. I went to the store. Oh, okay, there we are. So this does focus primarily on American English. So I'm still gonna do British English and you're going to see how it marks my intonation and stress. Now, as I said, I'm gonna speak using my accent, which is not American. And this focuses on American English, but intonation in British and American English is pretty much the same. So don't worry about that. Let's have a listen again. I went to the store so we can also see it says emphasize, went and store. So we're gonna record ourselves. I'm gonna record myself. I want you to listen and practice at home. So are you ready? I went, oh no, my network's not available. Let me turn on my internet. <laughs> okay, so now my internet's back on, let's have a go. So I went to the store. 
Good job. Well done me. <laughs> and hopefully you as well. What's good is you can also listen back. I went to the store. And this? I went to the store. I went to the store. So this is great. You can listen back to your recording and uh, compare it to the original recording that's on the app. Let's try another one together. Okay, you ready? I'm glad you like it. Well done to us. Let's try a few more. Take a left at the light. Oh, I, I put too much stress on take. I would naturally stress take. <laughs> like take a left. <laughs> Let's try and get it again. Take a left at the light. Okay. Take a left at the light. Oh, okay, we got it, we got it. I have a lot to do. Okay, which is true. I do have a lot to do. <laughs> I have a lot to do. Good job, good job. How many more have we got? Oh, I'll give it a shot. We've got a few more. I think this might be the last one. Okay, let's see. Let me listen again. I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. Okay, so remember she's American. She says shot, shot. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. Let's listen, let's go. I'll give it a shot. Good, okay, we're doing well, we're doing well. Something else I really like about this app is if you go to the bottom here, it should, oh, I might need to scroll across, there we are. Okay, it also gives you the phonemic transcription underneath. So as you can see, it's got, I'll give it a shot. Now do remember it is American English and the phonetic symbols between British English and American English, both of those charts, they are slightly different. It's just something to be aware of, but it gives you a really good guide on, should it be a schwa, should it be something else, okay? I find that really handy. Okay, we might have another one after this. Oh no. Calculating my <laughs> What do you know? I am a pro. Well, that's a nice confidence boost for today. <laughs> so let me tell you a little bit more about this app because I have something very special for you. For many of you who don't know, my boyfriend is Spanish, so I got him to try out the app. So I tried it out from a teacher's perspective, he tried it out from a learner's perspective, and we both really enjoyed the app. One thing that my boyfriend found particularly useful was how it gave instant feedback on very specific sounds. He really liked that it would also explain how to pronounce the sound. He found this useful and it helped him correct his speech so that when he did it again, he knew exactly what to do. Overall, Elsa is pretty much like a little pronunciation teacher that you can carry around with you 24 seven. So it gets my thumbs up. I really enjoy this app. You can download the Elsa app completely for free using the link in the description of this video. If you're serious about your pronunciation and you want to upgrade the app, then Elsa are offering you 80% off their lifetime pack and 30% off their yearly pack. So if you really are serious about your pronunciation, you want that feedback, you want that help, perhaps you want to compete with your friends and compare scores, things like that, then Elsa is great for that. I highly recommend downloading it. That's it for today's lesson. I hope you've enjoyed it and you've learned something new. I will see you next lesson. Enjoy the rest of your week. Bye bye.